Lily Tomlin has accomplished quite a ton in her decades-long career, including playing a surprisingly significant role in the origins of one of the most iconic TV shows of all time. This is the untold truth of a showbiz original. For much of her career, Lily Tomlin's sexual orientation was the worst-kept secret in Hollywood, as she and her now-wife, Jane Wagner, have been a couple since the early 70s. Whenever the topic was broached publicly, Tomlin typically deflected it with humor. During a 1973 appearance on The Tonight Show, for example, host Johnny Carson mentioned to her, "'You're very attractive, yet you've never married.'" To which she responded, "'Well, you've done it a few times. How is it working out?' And in 1999, Tomlin told the Denver gay newspaper out front, "...I never officially came out in any kind of really public way. I just always lived very simply and openly." During a 2019 appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Tomlin revealed that she had turned down an offer to come out publicly on the cover of Time in 1975, in much the same way that DeGeneres did in 1994. As Tomlin explained, "...it was a hard decision to make. I fell down on the side of probably after what you went through. Probably good sense." One of Lily Tomlin's most legendary TV appearances happened during a 1972 visit to The Dick Cavett Show. The host asked Tomlin's fellow guest, actor Chad Everett, if he owned any pets, and he responded by listing horses, dogs, and a wife. Everett may have found his own joke amusing, but the audience didn't, as they responded with just a few sporadic chuckles. But then he doubled down by describing his wife as the most beautiful animal I own. Tomlin, to put it mildly, was taken aback. You own? Wow. I have to leave. Shortly after Tomlin's abrupt exit, Everett noted that her walk-off was disturbing and expressed his desire that she'd return. She couldn't be know. serious. Spoiler alert, she was serious. As she later described the experience to the New York Times, it was a perfectly pure act. I felt angels walked me off. Tomlin also talked about the moment with the San Francisco Chronicle as she insisted that when she marched off the set, she wasn't angry. As she put it, I was in a completely relaxed, balanced kind of state. In 1975, Lily Tomlin made her movie debut in the Robert Altman-directed Nashville, as she played a gospel singer and mother of two deaf children. She made quite the splash, as the New York Times praised her spectacular dramatic debut, and she even garnered a Best Supporting Actress Oscar nomination. As she told the Times in a subsequent interview, she wasn't as surprised by her nomination as those who had primarily known her for the sketch series Laugh-In seemed to be. As she put it, "...I've always been confident I should be in movies or in any medium that I wanted to work in." Tomlin didn't win that Oscar, as she lost out to Lee Grant for Shampoo. And as of 2022, she hasn't been nominated again. Nevertheless, she has gone on to remain relevant for a solid half-century and earned plenty of wins and nominations from other awards bodies. One of her most notable recent acclaimed turns was in the 2015 film Grandma, which netted her a Golden Globe nomination. She has a theory for her enduring popularity. As she told Showbiz 411 in 2015, "...I was never a movie star. I was always a co-star." In 1977, Lily Tomlin made history on Broadway with the launch of her one-woman show, Appearing Nightly. Written by Jane Wagner, it was the first-ever one-woman show to play on The Great White Way. As the Journal of Popular Culture described it, Lily Tomlin's one-woman show defied easy categorization. It wasn't stand-up. It wasn't a play. It wasn't performance art. Instead, it was a collection of monologues, the enactment of characters, the performance of difference. Tomlin appeared on stage alone, with no props, no set, in simple black slacks and a gray blouse. That year, Tomlin won a special Tony Award in honor of her performance. She later returned to Broadway in 1985 with a new show entitled The Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe. Written once again by Wagner, this production won Tomlin another Tony this time for Best Actress in a Play. Then in 2000, she mounted a revival of Search, which netted her yet another Tony. As she admitted to The Morning Call, "...I love stage performance most of all." She also talked about how her live performance style has evolved. As she noted, "...over the years, I've gotten more relaxed, informal, and hopefully funnier." Lily Tomlin was one of the first people to ever host the sketch comedy institution, Saturday Night Live. 
as she emceed the show's sixth ever episode on November 22, 1975. And it turns out that her relationship with SNL actually runs far deeper. As series creator Lorne Michaels recalled in a 1979 interview with Rolling Stone, his entire path changed when he met Tomlin after leaving his native Toronto for Los Angeles. As he put it, Lily looked at my stuff from Canada and asked me to work with her. She was the first person I met who really cared about quality and getting it all right. Tomlin and Michael's collaboration resulted in Lily, an Emmy-winning 1973 TV special that led to two more, also co-produced by Michaels. Those specials grabbed the attention of NBC executive Dick Ebersol, who asked Michaels to develop a comedy show for a hip, intelligent audience. And thus, Saturday Night Live was born. While speaking with the New York Times in 1976, Michaels praised Tomlin for infusing her style with a quote, female aesthetic that resulted in a type of comedy that hadn't been done before. As he put it, Lily, by refusing to be hostile, by making herself vulnerable, is breaking the mold. A live 90-minute television show is not exactly soothing to the central nervous system. Tomlin's Oscar nomination for Nashville opened the door to a full-fledged movie career, but her third movie nearly slammed that door shut. Written and directed by her partner Jane Wagner, the 1978 romantic drama Moment by Moment paired Tomlin with a young John Travolta, who was hot off the success of Saturday Night Fever. Alas, it proved to be an epic bomb, as it was hit with scathing reviews and earned a measly $10.9 million at the box office. The fallout was so severe that Tomlin and Wagner considered ending their creative partnership. As Wagner told The Morning Call, Lily could have blamed me and cut me loose. While both lead actors' careers subsequently rebounded, Tomlin has continually expressed regret for moment by moment. As she told the Los Angeles Times in 1986, I made the wrong choice. I felt terrible. I'd just done Nashville. I didn't know myself. I didn't know what to do. It was amazing to me that you could pick up a magazine three or four years later and still hear about it. I felt for John, too. He's so sensitive. One of the most iconic moments of Lily Tomlin's career happened when she starred alongside Jane Fonda and Dolly Parton in the iconic 1980 flick, 9 to 5. The feminist revenge comedy is the biggest box office hit in Tomlin's filmography, and it also resulted in a decades-long friendship between the three leading ladies. As Fonda revealed on The Late Show in 2017, she became hell-bent on getting Tomlin to co-star with her in 9 to 5 after seeing her Broadway show. However, it took a lot of convincing to get her to sign on. I didn't want to do a cheap comedy. <laughs> I... You're an artist. You're an artist. I was You're on Broadway. For... Fonda ultimately succeeded, as she explained. It took a year to convince her. And then after a week of shooting, she asked my producing partner to let her go, and she'd give the week's money back. I'm not kidding. The reason for the hesitancy was that Tomlin saw early footage of her performance and didn't feel confident in her own work. I was not doing a good job, and I thought, oh, this is, I'm gonna be horrible in this. Thankfully, Tomlin ultimately had a change of heart when she saw the next day's dailies. And I was so good. 35 years after working together in 9 to 5, Lily Tomlin reunited with Jane Fonda for the Netflix sitcom Grace and Frankie. They play the longtime frenemy title characters, who bond when their husbands, played by Martin Sheen and Sam Waterston, come out of the closet and leave them for each other. The show was met with positive reviews and proved to be popular enough to ultimately run for seven seasons, with the final batch of episodes set to arrive in April 2022. It will be a bittersweet moment for the co-stars, considering how close they've become over the years. In fact, Tomlin and Fonda are such good friends that they even had the opportunity to discuss their relationship for a TED Talk. As Tomlin revealed, I look for someone who has a sense of fun, who's audacious, who's forthcoming, who has politics, who has even a small scrap of passion for the planet, someone who's decent, has a sense of justice, and who thinks I'm worthwhile. This sentiment garnered a round of applause from the audience, and then Fonda shared her perspective. I don't even know what I'd do without my woman friends. They make me stronger. They make me smarter. They make me braver. They tap me on the shoulder when I might be in need of course correcting. To say Lily Tomlin has won a few awards in her day is like saying Elon Musk has made a couple of bucks. 
She's in fact one of those rare performers who's just one trophy away from the EGOT, which refers to winning at least one Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. As of 2022, Tomlin has won six Emmys out of a whopping 25 nominations. She also has one Grammy for her 1971 comedy album, This Is A Recording, as well as three Tonys, including two competitive trophies for Appearing Nightly and The Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe, in addition to her one special Tony Award. Alas, she hasn't gotten the love from Oscar, though she did nab a nomination for Nashville. During a 2015 interview with The Guardian, Tomlin admitted that she would like to someday win an Academy Award. Not just to complete the EGOT, but also, as she put it, just because I'd like to make something out of it. She then declined to reveal what exactly that something was. As she noted, I don't want to tell you what I'd like to do, because then I won't be able to do it. As a showbiz entity, Lily Tomlin actually consists of two people. There's herself, and then there's her wife-slash-creative partner, Jane Wagner, who has written Tomlin's material since the early 70s. While Tomlin basks in the acclaim, Wagner prefers to remain in the background. I tried to protect her from too much publicity. Wagner did make a rare public appearance in 2012, when the couple were jointly honored with a star on the Palm Springs Walk of Fame. During their speeches, Tomlin paid tribute to Wagner. As she said, I get credit for everything. People think I should be a UN ambassador. I don't know what else. They think I'm so smart. But the brainy stuff really comes from her. But she also made sure to jokingly add, she's willing to forego that acknowledgement just so she can sleep late. Tomlin discussed Wagner more seriously in a 2020 interview with Variety. As she explained how Wagner is able to clearly elucidate Tomlin's feelings with words, something Tomlin struggles with. As she put it, she can express in words what I feel about the world, about humans, about the struggle that we're in, and presumably not the inevitability of it all, something that I know speaks to other people. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.